for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. I want to read a little to you from our most recent newsletter. Is it possible that there exists an ancient mystery in which is hidden the secret of America's future? Is it possible this mystery lies behind everything from 9-11 to the war in Iraq to the American housing bubble and its bursting to the crash of Wall Street and the global economy to the Great Recession and much more, even to the President of the United States. Now, there's a Messianic Jewish rabbi that lives right outside of New York City that went to the grounds of 9-11 after that horrific event occurred. And let me read you a quote by him. As I was standing at the edge of Ground Zero, I came across the first puzzle piece of an ancient biblical mystery and a prophetic message known as the harbinger that concerns the future of America. I have Rabbi Jonathan Kahn here. And uh, Jonathan, uh, you use a word, and I want to understand what you mean by it, harbinger. What, what do you mean? A harbinger is a sign, an omen, or a foreshadow of something that is yet to come. It could be a harbinger of something good, usually a harbinger of something that you take warning in, a harbinger of judgment in this case. That's exactly what it is. And the thing that is so stunning is that point by point, the Holy Spirit revealed to Jonathan that the pattern that happened to Israel is happening to the United States of America. And he found nine harbingers, nine warning signs. Jonathan, how important is this revelation at this moment in history? I think it couldn't be more important because God gives signs to a nation in warning it of judgment and God is calling America. America is in danger by these harbingers. It's a warning. It's to save the nation, but it is a sign that we are in a very dangerous period. Uh, briefly, tell me yeah. what happened to Israel at the time uh, of this prophecy. It's, it, it's Isaiah 9 uh, verse 10. Yeah, that's going to be the key. Isaiah 9 10 is the key to the harbingers. Ancient Israel uh, was founded by God, it was, it was blessed by God, but it turned away. It rebelled against Him, it drove Him out of its life. And what happened is God sent prophets to them, and He called them, warned them. And finally, He did something to shake them up to, as a wake-up call, and He withdrew their hedge of national protection. He lifted it up. It was temporary, but He lifted it up that an enemy struck the land and inflicted damage, traumatized the nation, but it was temporary, it was limited. They withdrew, and then there was a normalcy. It was to wake them up, a wake-up call, but they did not wake up, or they chose to keep defying God. Instead of repenting, turning back to God, they became even more defiant, and they made a vow, and, and that vow is Isaiah 9, 10. They said this, the bricks have fallen but we will rebuild with hewn stone. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will plant cedars in their place. And what that meant was, we're not going to be humbled. We're not going to turn back. We're going to continue away from God. In fact, we're going to come back even stronger. We're going to replace weaker things with stronger things. It, it, it's like a defiant exactly. spirit. Exactly. It's defiant. Exactly. You, you said the commentaries on this always do that, that same word. They say they, had a, they breathe the spirit of defiance. Exactly. So okay, that's the but that, that was ancient Israel. <laughs> and, right. and warning after warning, right. God, I can almost feel God's heart uh, saying, I do not want to see you destroyed. Uh, you're, you're my firstborn. Please heed the warnings. But Jonathan, why did you feel that this was a warning, a, a prototype, if you will, for the United States of America? Okay, well, is, okay, uh, ancient Israel did not turn and they were destroyed. So now we have America. America was also founded on God's word, was founded to fulfill his purposes. America has also turned, been turning and turning more and more rapidly away from God and his ways. God in his mercy, calls out to a nation and if it doesn't respond the callings get more severe and what happened now is the first harbinger or the, the first thing that happened was the breach was that that lifting up of the national security allowing an enemy to strike the land 
a wake-up call. You're, you're talking about 9-11. Well now, well now, yeah, yeah, not, that was for ages, but right. now God did it with America. We, that happened on exactly September 11, 2001. The, the national uh, defense of, of America, the, the hedge was lifted up. He allowed an enemy to strike, same way, limited scope, limited time, traumatized the nation, a wake-up call. 9-11 was an alarm try, seeking to save America to, from the road it's going on. Oh, okay, so the progressive judgments were nine harbingers, nine yes. warnings. Let's talk about one, the Gazette Stone. Okay, okay, this, this is what happened. If you, and you look at the key of Isaiah 9, 10, it says, the bricks have fallen, but we will replace them with hewn stone. What is hewn, hewn stone? So, yeah, in, in Hebrew, it's the word Gazette. Gazette means cut, quarried, uh, taken out of mountain rock. It's a, it's a strong thing. They made it into a big rectangular uh, mass of stone. What they were saying is there was destruction and it was clay bricks, but we're going to come back stronger as a nation. So we're going to take a stronger thing. We're going to build higher and bigger and, and better. So what they did is they took these gazette stones. They went to the quarries of the mountains, cut it out, brought it back to the ground of destruction where the bricks had fallen, and there they vowed, with this, we're going to rebuild the nation. Okay, a, a sign of defiance. It's okay, the that's, is, that's, that's Israel. Israel. What about America? Well, that's the thing. This is what happened. I mean, it's, after 9-11 in New York, they went to the mountains. They quarried out a rock, a 20-ton rectangular block. According to the, the, the harbinger, it has to be brought back to the ground of destruction. They bring it to New York City, bring it to ground zero, place it on the pavement of ground zero. They have a ceremony around the stone. They have leaders there, governor of New York, governor of New Jersey, the mayor. They pronounce vows of defiance over the stone. They said, this is the way this stone, America's going to come back stronger than ever. We're going to rebuild it. In fact, you said before, you said the spirit of defiance. That's what the commentaries say about this. The governor of New York actually says, we are the heirs of the spirit of defiance as we lay this stone. And, and he used the word defiance? He, he used, not just defiance, he used, he used the word spirit of defiance. He said, we are spirit of defiance. You see this over and over again. If there was just one parallel between Israel and what happened to them and their eventual destruction, and one parallel with the United States, we might say, so what? But there are nine harbingers with progressive judgments. This may be, no, this is the most important prophetic show you will ever see. We'll be right back after this word. Hello, it's Sid Roth here with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. And there is a scripture. It's found in the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the 10th verse, in which it includes nine harbingers, warnings for Israel. It's God's heart saying, please, Israel, turn from your wickedness so I can bless you. But it's progressive judgments that come to Israel until finally uh, they're, they're totally wiped off the land. Now, we don't want to see this happen in the United States of America. And that's why I've asked Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who takes a Messianic Jewish rabbi with a prophetic vent that lives right outside of New York City that actually went to the grounds of 9-11 and was able to put this together. Now, Jonathan, there's a mystery about the trees. Explain yes. that yeah. to me. The key in, in Isaiah 9:10 says the next part of it says the, says the sycamores have been cut down. Now, what is that? The Assyrians came in. That strike, that warning strike, they ravaged the land. The sycamores were ravaged, and, they, and it's a sign of biblical sign of judgment because actually. It occurs in Egypt. There's a psalm that says God struck down the sycamore. National judgment, a sign of uprooting. God was going to uproot the nation if it didn't turn back to him. So the sycamores have fallen, but what does that have to do with America? First of all, the terrorists of 9-11 weren't interested in sycamores. They, they struck cities, not fields. So the sycamore has to be struck down, sign of national judgment. So what happens? Amazing, eerie thing. On 9-11, the last tower, the northern tower, as it's crashing to the ground, sends out a beam into the air and it just so happens all around nine all around at ground zero there's concrete asphalt buildings but there's one little plot of land that has soil and growing it strikes an object the object is a tree what kind of tree it's the sycamore the sycamore hap just happened to be growing at the corner of ground zero is struck down the sign of national judgment but how how could from so from the wreckage something fell from the tower it shoots it across 
Which as, is a sign of national judgment. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah, you say, well, how could, well, first of all, this was the, you know, the sycamore of, of Israel was the Middle Eastern sycamore. It matched Israel, but God translated the harbinger. This is the Western sycamore, which is named after that very Middle Eastern sycamore of 9/11 of, of Isaiah 9:10. It happens to be struck down right at the corner of Ground Zero. And the people, there's something strange about the harbingers. They make signs of them. They take the fallen sycamore and they make it a sign, and they call it the, the sycamore of Ground Zero. People gather, they put it on display, and they have no idea. It's supposed to be a symbol of hope. They have no idea this is an ancient harbinger of judgment of a nation, mm. of uprooting if it doesn't turn back to God. Tell me the second tree. Okay, you go on right, it's like in progression, precisely down the prophecy, it says the sycamores have fallen, but Israel vows, we will plant cedars in their place. Same thing as the stone. They're saying, okay, you struck down our sycamores, God, we're not gonna be humbled. We're gonna take a stronger tree, the cedar, and we're gonna rise like that tree. It's gonna be a, a symbol of the nation. We're gonna come back stronger than ever. So they will, the, the sign is, the harbinger is they plant the cedar, except the cedar, the, the word, of course, is English. The, the original word is the Erez tree, Erez. Erez means cedar, but it also means any conifer tree, a coniferous tree. Literally, the most, the most exact translation is panacea tree. So just keep that in mind. The, the harbinger has to be, they have to take the sycamore out and replace it, not with another sycamore, which would be natural, but with a panacea tree or an mm -hmm. Erez tree. So would this happen? A strange thing. In 2003, November, a, a sign, a tree appears in the sky. It's on a crane. They are lowering it down to get an exact spot. They lower it over the corner of ground zero to get it in the exact spot where the sycamore had been struck down. What was the tree? It was a conifer tree. It was a panacea tree. It was the exact Erez tree of the scriptures of Isaiah 9, 10. And the same thing, they make it a sign. They call it the tree of hope. For Israel, they're saying, this is our hope. We're gonna come back stronger than ever. Called a tree of hope. They gather, have a ceremony around it. A man pronounces things over it, and it's the, it celebrates human defiance. And uh, and it's and it's the it's this, the exact harbinger. They don't know what they're doing, and but nobody knows what they're doing. No human hand is putting this together. I mean, the terrorists didn't try to, to strike down a sycamore, nor did they try to put this the matches up. But it all comes into place. It's the replaying of the ancient drama of judgment. Okay. Now tell me about a third tree, the buttonwood tree. Okay, well, okay, here's the principle. God says when there's a judgment for a nation, he says, I will expose its foundations, kind of like, kind of like destroying a house to the foundation. What are the foundations of a nation? The foundations of a nation are what it trusts in or what it was built upon or its powers. America's powers physically are, are military and economic or financial. So if we're going to see this, then we're going to see a mystery here that in 9-11 it exposes America's foundation. So where, where was America's financial foundation? Well, island of Manhattan, it's always been the center. That's where they had a trading post. Of course. They, set up, they set up a wall to defend themselves. They put up shops. It became known as Wall Street. But how did Wall Street become the financial uh, the foundation of America's rise as a superpower? It happened in the late 18th century. 24 merchants from New York City gather in a secret meeting. Then from that meeting, they sign a document. That becomes, that, that becomes the Buttonwood Association. Buttonwood Association later becomes known as the, the New York Stock Exchange, mm. Wall Street. So the foundation of America's power in, in economic is all linked to this word Buttonwood. So what is this Buttonwood? What does that have to do with? Buttonwood stands for a tree. And it was a tree. Why? Because there was a tree that stood in Wall Street that they did their business. They, they signed the document under. So the, the foundation of American uh, power in finance is linked to this buttonwood. And most, many people on Wall Street know this. So what, what kind of tree was it? It was the sycamore, the same as the sixth harbinger that was struck down on 9-11. This was the symbol of the striking down of the financial power of America. And not only that, they make signs appear. They make this bronze statue of the fallen sycamore, of the roots, a symbol of uprooted, uprootedness, and they place it not, not on ground zero, they place it on Wall Street. So now on the place that is the foundation of America, of its power financially, on the place that was symbolized by a sycamore tree living, the rise of America, now is a symbol of a dead, uprooted sycamore tree struck down by 9-11 the sign, I will expose its foundations. If America does not turn back, America will lose its financial place in the world. Progressive judgments. Wait till you hear about the vows and the people involved in these vows that line up with exactly what ancient Israel did. But it happened right here in the U.S. of A. Don't go away. Be right back.
Hello, Sid Roth here with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. We're finding out the most fascinating. Jonathan, God has really gift you, gifted you with a, a gift of revelation. But when I think about you, you have a prophetic edge to the scriptures. Uh, have you been like this for a long time? Uh, I, I, guess, I, guess, I guess I have. Um, I, you know, I don't know how, I can't say how these things happened. God just led me. It was one thing after the other. Uh, okay, yeah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 10, lists nine harbingers, warnings, progressive warnings from God. And he's saying, stop, come to your senses. I want to bless you. You started on the foundation of my love and my calling, he says to Israel. And he says that to the United States of America, too. I do not want to destroy you. But I want to understand the vows that, uh, this is so phenomenal. Explain okay. this. Yeah, everything goes according to Isaiah 9:10, the key of a nation's judgment. And so now in America, here's what happened in ancient Israel. The, this harbinger now is the vow itself, and that is the actual proclaiming or speaking of the vow of defiance, Isaiah 9:10. So here's the thing: who would have said it? The leaders had to have said it because it wouldn't be significant if they did. If it wasn't the leaders, it represents the nation. Represents we are not going to turn back to you, God. We're going to rebuild. We're going to come back stronger than ever, Isaiah 9:10. So what has to happen for this harbinger to manifest now in America is that that a leader, a national leader, has to say the vow, has to actually utter the ancient vow, has to happen in the capital city. That's where they would have said it in ancient Israel, in the capital city, and has to be done publicly. So could this have happened? The problem is, what national leader is going to want to pronounce judgment on America? Of course. And no one would intentionally. So here's, but here's what happened, amazing. On the third anniversary of 9-11, this is, this, is uh, this is September 11th, uh, 2004, in the capital city, Washington, before, at a public setting, the vice presidential candidate for the office, the Democratic ticket, he rises up. This is John Edwards. This is John Edwards. Okay. He rises up and he begins a speech. He's supposed to be talking about 9-11 and he thinks it's going to be inspiring. And this is what he says. Today on this day of remembrance and morning, we have the Lord's word to get us through. Then he says it. The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. He actually gives the vow of judgment on a nation. He's, he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's actually pronouncing so, judgment. So it's like a replay it's of a replay. what happened in ancient exactly. Israel exactly. as happening in the it's, United it's, States. It's exactly. And out of, out of 30,000 scriptures, you know, to choose from for inspiring, you don't choose this one. And in fact, people don't even know this one. He says it. This is the vow that pronounces judgment, and it's identifying America as the nation under judgment, turning away from God. And he doesn't only do that. He builds his whole speech around this. He goes on to say... We are putting cedars up. We are a speaking favor. He, we, are, we are putting up the stones, and those cedars shall rise. With those, He goes on and on. The whole speech is Isaiah 9, 10. And he has no idea. He's speaking figuratively. He has no idea. Actually, there was a tree, that, that, that the sycamore. There actually was this. There, all these things happened. He has he's, no idea. He, he's being a prophet and doesn't realize it. But it's a prophet of judgment. And what I find interesting is shortly thereafter, he fell into disgrace. Now, there was a second yes, vow. Yes. Now, the other, the other harbinger, where well, this is the vow, is also a prophecy. It's spoken before these things happen. It says, we will do this. So Israel said it before it would happen. Also becomes a matter of national record through Isaiah. It becomes part of Isaiah. So for this to happen, same thing. It's got to be a leader, capital city, but spoken before these things happen. In other words, right soon after the event, and it becomes a matter of national record. It speaks prophetically. So could this have happened? Amazing. On the day after 9-11, the very day, that morning, America has to give its response to the world. So this is really significant prophetically. America has to, this is the response of America to this, ju to this judgment or this calamity. So what happens? The man appointed to do this is the Senate majority leader, the, the head of the Senate. Senate represents the nation, and he is Tom Daschle. And he is, he is to come up and do, he's the man appointed. He gives, he gives the thing, and he gives a speech, and here's what happens. And bizarre, ominous, eerie, and profound. At the end of the speech, he closes with his pinnacle. He says, I know there's only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation, but I think there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times. Of like all this. the scriptures, he of picks all. that one. Amazing. I mean, and he, then he says it from the Capitol Hill, from the floor of the Senate, national record. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dress stones. Fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. And then he goes on. So he's actually... Uh, 
the very day after pronouncing judgment, linking it all together to ancient Israel. And he, then he goes on to say, it's not just Israel, it's our vow now. He says, that is what we, America, will do. In other words, this is going to be American policy. We will rebuild. We will recover. He is speaking prophetically. He has no idea that there actually is a tree that day that was just found. He has no idea that years later, all these things he says are actually going to happen at ground zero. He is predicting that America, he's prophesying that America is going to go the course of defiance as ancient Israel. If it, if he's setting a course without so, realizing. So John Edwards yes. does this. Yes. He shortly falls, almost a prophetic yes. sign. Tom Daschle then fell into disgrace when uh, he, he was asked to be part of the cabinet, if you remember. Yes. Yeah. But here's the amazing thing to me. President Barack Obama knows nothing about any of this. But President we Barack Obama is also involved in this vow of national defiance. And Jonathan, you told me that there is even a key, a mystery, if you will, to the economic judgment that will hit America as part of the progressive that, progressive that, judgments that, that are occurring. Is hitting. Yeah, that, that the harbingers, this is not the end, this is the beginning, because the harbingers are going to touch everything. They're going to touch the American economy. They're going to touch the world economy. They're going to actually determine the exact days when these calamities are going to happen. And it's amazing. It's going to touch every, it's going to touch, in fact, it, it is already touching the, everyone listening. And, and, and every American and their bank account and everything else is in an ancient mystery. Next week, you will understand a key from the Bible that gives an understanding of why the shaking financially is occurring in America. Very few people understand this. It takes someone with a Jewish background that understands the ancient prophets. What happened in Israel is happening in the United States of America right now. And I am concerned about you. Do you have religion? with defiance. What do I mean by defiance? Without repentance. What do I mean by repentance? Meaning turning from your sin and start to serve God. It's time to repent and get right to God. You know why? You don't know when your end's going to come. That's why. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. I love prophecy. There was a prophet that's in heaven right now. His name, David Wilkerson. And he, for years, was prophesying from Isaiah chapter 9 about judgment coming to the United States of America. And there's a Messianic Jewish rabbi that I believe God has raised up to stand on David Wilkerson's shoulders, if you will, talking about the same prophetic word and the same results. But you must understand, in ancient Israel, it was not God's will for judgment to come. There were progressive, if you will, warning judgments. And there was a pattern. And Rabbi Jonathan calls them harbingers, warnings. There were nine warnings to ancient Israel. And we're finding these same warnings are going on with a country so intimately involved in ancient Israel. When you think of the United States of America, you think of the one giant that is hanging on to be a protector of Israel. At least historically, that's the way it's been. Jonathan, I was so amazed when I found out that David Wilkerson was saying the same word you were saying, but you have brought clarity to it that anyone could understand. Yeah, the, the amazing thing is that he said it the week after 9-11, and it wasn't because he was, he was seeing these things. It just came to him from the Lord, and he said, this is the word. Uh, I also, at that time, I prayed, I got it, I didn't realize what it meant, and then it started unfolding with precision, exactly so. From 9-11 to now, the stages of judgment. And it begins with, and here's the pattern also, with ancient Israel, we're following the same pattern. Ancient Israel, they, they, there's a strike, they are, they are defiant of it, and, and, and they def by defying it, God says, if you read on from Isaiah 9-10 into the rest, the rest of the prophecy, judgment comes to Israel. So what, this is what I call the Isaiah 9-10 effect, that the attempt of a nation to defy God without repentance, to defy the calamity, 
will bring about the second calamity. That is, and if you look at the commentaries on this verse, that's exactly what they say. Israel sort of, we're going to build, we're going to build our walls, we're going to fortify, we're going to get stronger. By doing so, they ended up destroying the nation. So what about America? What has happened? The, the, the awesome, the amazing thing, the scary thing, is that the harbingers have continued. Is it affected everybody's bank account, everybody, the economy, Wall Street, everything else? And it happens through the Isaiah 910 effect. America says in, after 9-11, you know, we're not, we're not going to repent. Really. We're going we're gonna to defy it. We're going to have a war of terror. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. We're going to rebuild our security, all that. I'm not judging whether that's right, right. or wrong. But without repentance, it's, it's going to backfire. That's what the Isaiah 9-10 effect says. That's what happened to Israel, and that is, is what, what is in progress yes. progressively with the United States yeah. of America. Yes. Now, the Bible says that there should be two or three witnesses. Now, we heard about two witnesses last week. Would you recap that? Any truth is established by two or three witnesses or a matter of judgment. Now, we think about people, it is, but it also applies to nations. So could there be two or three witnesses uh, as a witness of America under judgment and linking this to ancient Israel in its last days? And the amazing thing is it is. The first one happened the day after 9-11 on Capitol Hill, no less. The Senate Majority Leader, uh, Tom Daschle, actually vowing the vow of Isaiah 9-10 verbatim, word for word, identifying America as a nation under judgment, not knowing what he was doing. Of but all the scriptures in all the Bible, he picks the one that Isaiah uses for judgment for Israel, Tom Daschle, and almost prophetically, shortly after he says that, he falls. And what, what about the next then witness? There's the second witness. Second witness, also national leader, Washington, D.C., and he say, it's, it is John Edwards running for vice president, and he says it on the anniversary of 9-11. He gives a speech. The entire speech is, a, is the vow of Isaiah 9 10. He actually says it again, and the whole speech is vowing the vow, having no idea. He is identifying America as a nation under judgment and speaking the ominous words that led to Israel's destruction. And that happens on 9-11 at, at the anniversary, and so you have two witnesses now. Saying the same script. Same Sure. Thing, and having no idea what he's doing. Same thing. But and, it's and, and by the way, uh, both of them prophetically after fell from power. What about the third witness? Well, the Bible says two or three witnesses, so, so there could, be a, could there be a third? The it answer, must be important to the, be three. The answer is yes, and the, the third witness is the President of the United States himself. And that, and what he's going to do, what the third witness is going to do, is going to link together not only 9-11, but all the economic things that happened after it. You have two stages of judgment here. You have 9-11, you have then you have the economic shaking of America and its power. So. So you have, here's where it happens. It's February 2009. The new president, elected on a great platform of hope, the hope in the president, he comes into the Congress. It's his first speech before the, the Congress together. He goes there and he gets up and he says, he's talking about the economic crisis. Everybody's scared. He says this. He wants to assure them. He says this. He says, uh, I know that for many Americans watching right now, the state of our economy is a concern that rises above all others. Then came these words. But while our economy may be weakened, our confidence shaken, though we are living through difficult and uncertain times, tonight I want every American to know this. What is it? We will rebuild. Same central vow of all the others that went on there. And it's, we will rebuild. If you had to sum up Isaiah 9 10, the central, we will rebuild. It doesn't fit into an economic speech. You, I could see it when a, a house is destroyed, but not now. He says it, and, and all around the world, the, all the headlines read, they choose these three words all around the world uh, New York Times, uh, CBS, oh, we will rebuild, we will rebuild. He goes on. If you had to sum up Isaiah 9 10, it's saying we will rebuild, we will recover, and we will emerge stronger than before. The president says, we will rebuild, quote, we will recover, and the United States of America will emerge stronger than before. When we come back, we're going to find out about the economic judgment and the ties to ancient Israel that blow you out of the water. I mean, I have never heard this tied together before like this. But the question I have for you, if John Edwards made that prophetic vow and shortly fell in disgrace. If Tom Daschle made that prophetic vow and shortly fell into disgrace, what will happen to the President of the United States, President Obama, who made that prophetic vow? Don't you dare go away. Hello, Sid Roth here with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Rabbi Kahn is a Messianic Jewish rabbi that just happened to be at ground zero when the tragedy occurred and just happens to be a prophetic Bible teacher and is building on the shoulders 
of David Wilkerson's prophecy, who used the same scriptures that God has revealed to Jonathan Kahn. Now, Rabbi, the next judgment was going to be in the economic area. Exactly. The second shaking is the shaking of a, of a nation's economic power, which we are witnessing. But, here, but you explained something that I, only a Messianic Jewish rabbi could understand, and that is the mystery of the Shemitah. What is the Shemitah? Yeah. The Shemitah is the Hebrew word for the seventh year, the Sabbath year. Every seven years, Israel had to rest, and it had to, had to, the, what happened during the Shemitah is no farming, no, no selling of fruits, all that abandoned, the, it touches the economic realm, and on the last day of the Shemitah, the rest year, the last day, they have to release all credit, all debt, the, the nation's financial accounts are wiped away, and so it should be a blessing, so why? Uh, even, even rabbis today do this on the last day of that Sabbath year, yes. the Shemitah. Yes. Uh, symbolic. They, they yeah, they release debt. Yes, symbolic. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. So how could that, what does that have to do with judgment? And, and here is how. When a nation like ancient Israel turns away from God, they drive him out of their life, their schools, their culture, their, their economics, and they don't want to rest, they want money and gain, so they stopped doing it. They broke, they broke the Shemitah, broke all of God's laws. So what happens? The Shemitah comes back now not as a blessing, but as a judgment. So what happens is that God, therefore, takes the people out of the land, the Babylonian in exile, captivity, and the land now rests. It has its Sabbaths, its Shemitahs. For 70 years, there's no selling, no all debts. Everything is wiped away by force. And how long? 70 years. Why? Because there were 70 Shemitahs, or Sabbath years, that they didn't observe. So the Shemitah becomes now a sign of judgment against a nation that has driven God out of its life, that has put economics first, and, and also it holds the mystery of the timing of that judgment. So could we expect, could, we, could this be linked to America? The answer is amazingly yes. So, so, in other words, God wanted the Shemitah, the Sabbath rest, to bless his people, Israel. But if they would not follow his laws, it ended up being a judgment. And for every Shemitah they did not observe in defiance, they were dispersed. So the Shemitah becomes now a sign of judgment and it touches specifically a nation's economic or financial realm. So, America, when did this whole financial collapse happen? Happened 2008 in one week, beginning with the fall of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, ending with Lehman Brothers fall that launched the whole global implosion. One week. That same week was the anniversary week of the first shaking or the first calamity, which was 9-11. It was the anniversary of 9-11 when all these things were happening. Not just the anniversary, but it was the seven-year mark of 9-11. So what can we see here now? It also involved what? It involved the wiping away of the financial realm, debt, mortgages, wiped away, bailouts, buyout, you know, uh, uh, bankruptcies, all this, the Shemitah, the same force of the Shemitah by judgment. So this points us to something. The last day of the Shemitah was the big day when all these things were wiped out. So my question would be, during the economic collapse, what was the, was there a pinnacle day? And there was. And what was it? It was the greatest stock market point crash in the history of Wall Street up to that time. When did it happen? It happened at the end of September. When did it happen? On the Hebrew calendar, it happened on the exact day, the 29th day of Elul in Hebrew, which is the exact day when, when all the finances had to be wiped away. The greatest stock market crash in history. If I'm understanding you right, because the, the Hebrew calendar is different than the, the calendar for the rest of the world, it occurred on the Shemitah. Uh, the, the worst stock market crash uh, on the first Shemitah, seven years later, then one even worse than that. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about a Shemitah in 2001, and then we're talking about a Shemitah in 2008, when's the next Shemitah? Well, the next Shemitah is 2015. We can't, we, you know, we can't make the prediction, but it, it is a sign that God... But wait a second. If we had the worst stock market crash on that first Shemitah, and, and then one worse than that on the second, I wonder what is... But you know what? These are progressive warning judgments. It could be even worse. Don't go away, because you're going to find a connection between the United States that is phenomenal and what happened to Israel. Be right back. Hello, Sid Roth here with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, and I am so amazed at these Sabbath years and how they're tied in with progressive blessings or progressive judgments, and yet it's God's heart for it to be blessings. 
And every seventh year for the last, what's well, starting in 2001 and in 2008, stock market crashes. But there is, it's sort of like God is putting his name on it. And tell me about these amazing sevens that that appeared. Well, it's, it, the center of this is a sign is the number seven. And so here we on the greatest stock market crash in history, which happened at the exact day of the end of the seventh Hebrew year, the Shemitah, at the same, it, it was marked by sevens. It happens, first of all, uh, it, how much did the, did the market lose? Seven percent of its value. It, it crashed because of a, of a, of a Congress's uh, bill that was seven hundred billion dollars. How many points were, were in the greatest crash? Seven, seven, seven. You know, when I saw that in the newspaper, I, I just, I couldn't something, believe it. Something, yeah. It, it's, like, it's like God showing his fingerprints. Yeah, yeah. And, and even in the first one, the one, at, the one that was caused by 9-11, how much percent of the market? Seven percent, even in 2001. And, that, and here's a, also a, a kind of eerie thing in that that was caused by 9-11. So it tells you that, that all this had to happen. Who could have orchestrated all this? Every transaction, every, everything in the world had to go together. Only God could have. And the thing is that 9-11 and, and was part of that mystery, or it would not have happened when it did. That's what caused it. And the word, just one other thing about the word Shemitah, it actually also means to let fall. So here is, here is God letting fall the American economy and letting fall America's reign. This is what, as the head of nations, if it doesn't repent. It is God's Shemitah. Now... Speaking of mysteries, there's a mystery in ancient Israel to the actual ground where these various oaths were made. Okay, all right, yeah, th this is, this is the, the, the mystery is this, that there was a day when Israel came together, it was finished, the temple was finished, everything was there, it was the dedication day, inaugural day of Israel, Solomon gathers the people for prayer, and he prays and he intercedes for the future and come prophetic words about if, if the nation ever falls away from God, this whole thing, it's the dedication. Could there be a day in American history that actually matches up with that? And the answer is yes. The very first day of America as a nation, as a fully constituted nation, wasn't 1776. It was 1789 when, for the first time, America as we know it, it had a president with a Congress, all that came into existence on the day that Washington was inaugurated. Same thing happens. The nation comes to the Capitol. There is, it's called a day of prayer. Washington speaks. He speaks about God. He speaks about the future. And actually, there is a, there is a hidden prophetic warning that is in that first day. It found it almost for a day like, appointed for a day like this. Washington gives a warning. I have no questions from God. And he says, here's the warning. In that very first day of America, it says this, we ought to be no less persuaded that the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained. In other words, if America ever turns away from God, its blessings of protection, of prosperity will be removed. Protection. And here we have 9-11, first, that first blessing being removed. We are watching as America turns away from God. If it doesn't turn back, we are watching all the blessings are going to be removed. And that is the warning that he said that day. But that wasn't the, the only thing. Then Washington leads the entire first government of America on foot to a place to pray and basically to commit America's future to God, to consecrate. It's concentra consecrating America to God. That was the very first act of the American government together was to pray. And to so he does it. They pray in a little stone chapel, and they consecrate the, the, it all to God. Now, here's the principle. Now, where, where is this stone Well, this is, this is, let me just put in the principle here. And the principle is that, that when Solomon dedicated Israel, it was on the Temple Mount. When judgment came, it came to the Temple Mount because the principle is judgment returns to the ground of consecration. So where is that ground of, of, of consecration? It was the nation's capital, not Washington. It was New York City. And it was not, it was lower New York City. Where was it? America was consecrated to God at the corner of ground zero. And it, in fact, not even just that, they actually, that, that church owned the land of ground zero. Ground zero is the consecration ground of America. Judgment returns to the ground of consecration. And so God is calling back a nation. It's all about that. Amazing when this thing happened. Not only that, it, there was one building, only one building that was protected from all these things. All the other buildings around Ground Zero were destroyed in some way or finished. Or so 
One building was protected, which? It was the little stone chapel of St. Paul's, the ground of America's consecration to God. And, and why was it protected? They said it was the, the sycamore that was struck down actually protected the, the place. So actually the harbingers are actually meant, it was a harbinger. This is the, the harbinger we spoke about was the sycamore, sign of judgment, but it actually saved it. So the harbingers are actually to call the nation back and save it, which also tells us that it's the, the two of the harbingers, the sycamore tree we spoke about and the Eres tree, the signs of judgment happened on America's consecration ground. That's all where it happened. God is calling the nation back. But but yet so. that 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 little chapel was spared. Totally. I understand some U.S. Uh, newspapers called it a miracle. Absolutely, it was the one, the only thing they called a miracle at that time. Not thinking, not putting it together. This is the ground of America. This is where America. This is where Washington prayed for the future. What happens if America turns away from God? So it's drawing the nation all the way back. We looked at Ground Zero. We didn't realize that. You have two places on that day. You've got Ground Zero. You, you have the place where America was consecrated to God, and then you have the place where Washington gave the warning and America began as a nation, Federal Hall. On the day of 9-11, a shockwave goes out from Ground Zero. It goes out and strikes Federal Hall, the foundation. And it, and it cracks the foundation, like a symbol, the foundation is cracked. The foundation actually cracked? It was actually cracked. The foundation of America's foundation was actually mm -hmm. cracked on 9-11 by the shockwave. And then, and here we bring it, bring it home, and there's so much we can't do, but, but this is the point here, is that Solomon prayed. He said, what, you know, basically, what happens, Lord, if, if the nation turns away from you? God answers him. He hears a prophetic answer, and he answers him and, from that day, and he says that, well, if it turns away, it'll be destroyed. But, but, and here's the but, and this is the word for America. And now, he said this to Solomon, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. That's it is the word for America. And it's a word for not only the nation, it's a word for his people, those who are called by his name. Because God is calling, calling his people to live, to come back, to, to break away, repent of complacency, repent of apathy, repent of the secret sins, and turn back to God. Now is the time. This is the time of judgment. Now is the time, because it says judgment begins with the house of God. David Wilkerson was a prophet. You are a prophet that's going on really deep revelation of what David Wilkerson saw. What do you think is going to happen to America? If America does not turn back to God, it, there will be judgment. America will lose its place, will lose its place as the head of nations, will lose its economic blessings, will lose its, will lose its, uh, even its security. Uh, if, if any nation that turns away from God, it says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. If the watch, unless the Lord watches the city, the watchmen watch in vain. So we are at a critical time, a critical time. Now, one other note, there can be judgment and revival at the same time. You know, because sometimes it comes through that. But the point is, God is calling the nation to return to him. If it doesn't return, as Washington said, then it will lose the smiles of heaven. It will lose the blessings that made America great. That has always been the case. You, you know, I was reminded about the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah saw judgment coming in his lifetime. Jeremiah saw the judgment. He warned. He did everything possible. They thought he was crazy. They said uh, they didn't want anything to do with him. He suffered so much persecution. And this is what he says in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. I mean, what good is wisdom and might? <laughs> Let, let not the rich man glory in his riches. What good are riches in, for, in, when the buildings came down at 9-11? But this is what God says to you. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Many people say, just say a little prayer. But Jesus says something different. He says, this is eternal life that you might know me. And we have settled for cheap religion without repentance. Repentance means turning from your wicked ways to God in which he will forgive you and give you the power to, able, to be able to walk a righteous life. Do you want to know God? There's only one way to know God and that is to believe Jesus died in your place for your sins. 
make him your Lord and come to know him. Yes, you can.